This tutorial shows you how to build a Windows 8 application using JavaFX. By Windows 8 application, I mean an application that doesn't use the traditional pull-down menus like you see here on my Mac with the JVM. Instead, it devotes regions of the screen such that when you hover over one of these regions, you'll get your additional commands to execute on the application. So for example, here you see along the right-hand side of this application a transparent blue region, and down at the bottom you see a transparent red region. When I enter that region uh, on the right-hand side, I'm presented with an item A, and when I press A, I do some menu options. Uh, same thing with the bottom, menu, uh, bottom region. When I select that, I get some uh, bottom options, in this case, button B. Now, hovering over the region works if I stay in the application or if I leave it. Um, it will restore the uh, control panel as I'm focusing my mouse uh, input into it. Uh, one important note is you'll see the label main content goes here. The main content in this application takes up all the available real estate if none of the special control panels are shown. This label is oriented in the bottom right, and if I make the right-hand control panel available, notice that the content shifts to the left, redrawing it, still taking up all the available space, but now accommodating my control panel. Leaving it and entering the bottom, it's the same thing. Main content goes here, shifts up. So the main content in a case where we're not dealing with any of these um, additional command options is going to take up all the available real estate, which is an important design goal. You're looking at the FXML file for my Windows 8 menuing demonstration in Scene Builder 2.0. As you might have guessed if you were able to look at the code behind the demonstration in the previous segment, I'm using a border pane for this control panel functionality. On the right hand side I have a node that contains a button A and on the bottom I have a H box that contains a button B. And these two nodes are going to be um, added to the border pane at runtime but from Scene Builder's perspective I just add them so that I can display it as though all of the um, everything were displayed at once to see how that type of display would look. Um, the, the mechanism by which I'm going to be interacting with the control panels is driven off of a pair of regions. My border pane is wrapped up into a stack pane, and I've got two regions, one on the right that's a um, blue transparent, see, and one on the bottom which is a red transparency. And the blue one is going to handle a mouse event um, entered uh, event. Uh, and you can see over here in my uh, region, when we look at the um, mouse um, entered, there's a handle hotspot enter method, and it's something that's also shared with the bottom pane. Um, in terms of sizing, I've got the regions are taking up slightly less space than their control pa panel counterparts. So in the case of the transparent blue on the right, that is a width of 25, which is less than the width of 50 for the V-Box. Similarly, I have a height of 25 for the bottom region, and that's in contrast to a height of 50 for the bottom uh, H-Box. And that's important so that, as you see my action on the control panel, I'm registering a message um, or mouse leaving uh, method. So I leave the control panel. So as I enter the control panel, um, the region, I'm doing one thing, but then as I'm leaving the control panel, I'm doing something else. And that's going to be shown in the next demonstration when we talk about the action of this uh, in code. We'll finish off this demonstration by going over some of the code used in this Windows 8 menuing uh, demonstration. Uh, my main is very standard. It's just a subclass of application and it creates a scene based on the FXML that we had just reviewed. Um, there's a style sheet. Um, the style sheet is just setting the um, region colors for demonstration purposes. I'd probably comment these out as well. Uh, so that gets us to the controller. Now the controller has FXML members for the hotspots, which are regions, um, and also for the um, uh, for the control panels, which is a V box for the right and an H box for the bottom.
I also have the border pane, the overall border pane added here. Um, when I initialize this, um, the key thing that I think you, you might find interesting in this demo is I'm setting the border panes right and bottom to null. So although they're set in scene builder, um, that's a real good way to, to statically lay everything out and arrange your, your items. Um, I'm starting out the application with them both empty. And just, uh, just a quick review, the what that looks like is um, I have a content pane where none of the um, side uh, panels are activated. Remember, main content goes here. That's the bottom right of the center in the border pane. So it does bottom. You don't find the label sitting here, accommodating um, the left and right pane. Um, uh, visible didn't work because visible still retains the space. So the only real um, way for me to do this was to set the nodes to null. So right off the bat, I set the nodes to null, and that makes the content take up all the available space. Um, handle command, that's meant to represent an invocation of the business logic. Which brings me to the enter and leave controller methods. Um, when I enter into a hotspot or a region, I'm doing a basic check to decide which of the, which of the two hotspots I'm using. If I'm on the right-hand side, then I set my node, which has been created by the normal FX um, initialization routine, the controller factory and the uh, injection from the FXML file. Um, and I'm also making the hotspot uh, invisible when when I've um, activated the control panel. And it's the same thing with the bottom. In that case, I'm replacing the null bottom value with a uh, control panel object that was injected. And I'm um, setting the bottom hotspot to false, so the region goes array away. Now, the visible is important because we want the, um, we want the underlying uh, VBox's buttons to be able to assume control. So we don't want our stack pane to obscure and intercept all the events. So, and that's okay because our regions, they'll be, they'll be transparent, but they're expected to always be visible during the application's uh, operation. Um, I suppose there may be a boundary condition. Uh, if you were working with that expanded content, we might want to um, be able to get at something under the region, uh, but maybe that's a future demo. Uh, leave control panel, that's the opposite. At this point, we've activated the controls that are in the V box and the H box, making them eligible to receive events. Um, and then to undo that, I will restore their null value that was in at the initialization. So entering, I will add the object to the border pane, and the border pane will redraw itself. And in the case of leaving, I will leave, and the border pane will um, will redraw itself with the empty value. Um, so that was pretty was pretty straightforward. Um, not a lot of code here, just two handlers for a you know a mouse in, mouse out on two different controls. Uh, but the key takeaway again is is my use of the nulls here. Um, I had to blank out the border pane entirely um, because the visible property was um, still accounting for its space. So pretty straightforward. Um, usage uh, and you may find that this is something that helps with the modern app design uh, involving touch and other things that don't use the traditional menuing systems.